As reliable and robust as the Tesla supercharger network is, there are times when Tesla owners either want to or need to use DC fast chargers from other networks. And those are equipped with CCS1 plugs. In order to do so, Tesla owners need to use an adapter like this one here. This is made by Electron and it allows the CCS1 plug to go in on this end and the other side here plug into the Tesla port or the North American charging standard port. It works just fine with Tesla Model 3, Model Ys, Model Ss, and Model X. All of those vehicles can use an adapter like this to charge on CCS1 DC fast chargers. However, there's a new Tesla in town, the Cybertruck. And although the Cybertruck uses the same charging standard as the other Tesla vehicles, its design prevents these adapters from working. And there's nothing to do with the inlet here. It has to do with the fact that the Cybertruck has very large fender flares. And the charge inlet for the Cybertruck, like all Teslas, is on the rear right corner of the vehicle, right on the protruding fender flare. The problem with that is this little shaft here isn't long enough on the existing adapters to reach beyond the fender flare and mate with the Tesla vehicle. So A to Z EV came up with a new adapter. It's basically the same type of adapter, even looks pretty much the same here, right? Except look at the size of the shaft here. Cue the shaft jokes. Um, <laughs> see that there? This longer shaft allows the adapter to reach beyond the fender flare and connect with the vehicle. So, just got a hold of one of these. I'm gonna borrow a friend's Cybertruck. We're gonna make sure it works. I'll give you all the details and specs on it here and let you decide as a Cybertruck owner, if you wanna get one of these for those occasions when you need to charge on a CCS1 charging station. Let's get into it. Okay, so let's take a look at this guy. As I said, it's basically the same adapter as the ones you see on the market now that other Teslas use. It has the same type of locking mechanism. When you push this into the vehicle, this little tab here pushes in. And what that does, as you can see, same with this one, that uh, locks a pin inside the vehicle to the adapter. So you can't pull the adapter away from the vehicle while it's hot, while the vehicle is charging. And also it protects it so that nobody can steal your adapter while you're charging. You have to unlock the adapter from the vehicle, either from your app, from inside the vehicle, or uh, if the charger allows you to end charging on the screen, you can shut it off then once charging stops, it unlocks and you can remove it from the vehicle. So it works the same as the existing ones. Everything's fine with it. You get a nice little uh, carrying case. A to Z gives you a carrying case pretty much with all their adapters. It's nice uh, and it's, it's not just, you know, swag. It actually is functional because most people don't use these adapters that often. They sit in their vehicle for a long time. You can get dust and contaminants can, can get inside the uh, both ends of this and over time fouls the pins. So it's good to keep it inside some sort of a bag or container. And it's nice that uh, A to Z gives you these with all of their adapters because you wanna protect the adapter for long use. If, if you really just throw it in your trunk or you know it's in your vehicle, coffee gets spilled on it or something, that's really gonna be a problem with the pins if they get fouled over time. It wouldn't happen anytime soon, but you know these, these aren't cheap, you don't want to, uh, do anything foolish that's going to shorten the life of it. You want to keep them as long as you can. Okay, so before we head out to use it, let's take a look at the adapter's key features. It costs $175 and you can order it directly from the A to Z EV website. 
I do have a current state of charge coupon code that gives you 15% off. That's only gonna run through November. So you only have about two weeks to use that. And with that coupon code, it takes the price down under $150. So if you think you might want one of these, think about getting it uh, soon because uh, after November's over, the state of charge coupon code, and actually all coupon codes are gonna go away on A to Z for a little while. All right, max voltage, it can accommodate up to 1000 volts. The maximum amperage is 350 amps continuous. However, that's the continuous draw. It actually can handle boosts of up to 500 amps for about 15 minutes. And that's important because the Cybertruck can accept more than 350 amps, but it does so for a short period of time. We'll hopefully get a chance to see that today when I do a DC fast charge recording at an EV go station. It weighs two pounds, 2.2 ounces. The dimensions are six and five eighth inches by three and a quarter inches by five inches. And as for the weatherproof rating, the enclosure itself has an IP67 rating, but the mating is IP54. The operating temperature is 122 degrees Fahrenheit to negative 22 degrees Fahrenheit. That's pretty standard for electric vehicle charging equipment. The conductor material is silver plated copper. It is currently undergoing safety certification as per UL2252. A to Z EV fully believes it's going to pass that and be safety certified, but we'll have to wait and see. It comes with a one year warranty and it is made in China. All right, so I'm here at an EVgo 350 kilowatt DC fast charger with my friend's Tesla Cybertruck. The adapter worked perfectly. It allows the connector to plug into the vehicle and have just enough clearance before it hits the fender flare. So we're charging up now, and I'm curious to see how well the Cybertruck charges on this 350 kilowatt DC fast charger as opposed to the 250 kilowatt Tesla superchargers that operate on lower voltage. The Cybertruck has an 800 volt architecture, so it should be able to charge a lot faster on this charger than the Cybertrucks that I've tested on Tesla superchargers. So I'm gonna do a 10 to 80% recording here and then compare it to the results that I've done in the past when I charged my Cybertrucks on Tesla superchargers. State of charge is powered by Qmerit. After I help you decide which electric vehicle charger you're going to buy, follow the link in the description of my videos and have the installation professionals at Qmerit install it. And by following the link, Qmerit will waive the $200 on-site inspection fee. But in order to have that fee waived, you have to follow the link in the description of my videos. Okay, so what we have here on the screen are two 10 to 80% recordings with a Tesla Cybertruck. On the left is the recording I did here at the 350 kilowatt EVgo charger with the A to Z adapter, which can charge electric vehicles up to a thousand volts. On the right is my Cybertruck recording at a 250 kilowatt Tesla supercharger, which has a voltage limit of about 500 volts. And that's important because the Cybertruck's battery uses an 800 volt architecture. So it should charge at a higher rate on the EVgo charger than it does on a Tesla supercharger. Tesla's next generation V4 superchargers are going to have a thousand volt limit, but we don't have any of those installed yet here in the US. And also I need to note that this isn't a perfect comparison because the supercharger recording was actually a zero to 100% recording that I did. You can see here at the bottom of the screen that the vehicle has already taken in 12 kilowatt hour during this session and was charging for about four minutes before I stopped this recording. Also note that the supercharger is delivering its maximum power of 252 kilowatt to the Cybertruck right at the beginning of this recording. So it's delivering the full amount of power that it can to the Cybertruck right from the get-go. Now Tesla's charging sessions are fairly reliable and repeatable. So as long as the battery is at the right temperature, which it was during both of these recordings, I don't think that starting at zero would really affect the 10 to 80% results that much. If it did, it might've been a minute or so, but not more than that. If I see in the comment section that people are asking me to repeat the supercharger recording and do a 10 to 80% charge session and then compare it again 
Perhaps I'll do that at a later date. But with that said, let's start up the two sessions. Okay, so I'm gonna stop them both after three minutes of charging and see where they're at. The EVgo station with the A to Z adapter is charging at 274 kilowatt and the pack voltage is 739 volts, much higher than what the supercharger can deliver and the vehicle is at 21% state of charge. The supercharger is charging at 219 kilowatt and the Cybertruck is at 19% state of charge. Now let's skip five more minutes into the charging session and stop the recording after eight minutes of charging. Okay, after eight minutes of charging, the EVgo station with the A to Z adapter has the Cybertruck at 36% state of charge, while the supercharger has the Cybertruck at 31% state of charge. However, the supercharger is actually delivering slightly more power at this point, 206 kilowatt to 192 kilowatt, but that's only because the state of charge is higher on the Cybertruck charging on the EVgo station. When the vehicle was at 31% state of charge, like the Cybertruck charging on the supercharger is now, it was pulling 223 kilowatt, more than the Cybertruck on the supercharger is accepting here. It looks like the supercharger is charging faster, but it's not because it's 5% behind in the state of charge. And as the state of charge rises, the charging power will taper off. Now let's jump up to the 14 minute mark. The EVgo station has a 6% state of charge lead, 50% to 44%. And in both charging sessions, the vehicles are taking in just about the same power. All right, let's jump six minutes ahead and take a look at where we're at after 20 minutes of charging. The EVgo station is holding a 6% state of charge lead, 61% to 55%, and the supercharger is delivering slightly more power, 119 kilowatt to 111 kilowatt that the EVgo station is putting out. And that's because, as I mentioned before, the Cybertruck will call for less power. Okay, now let's jump 10 minutes forward and see where the vehicles are after 30 minutes of charging. The EVgo station still holds a 6% state of charge advantage, 73% to 67%. But the interesting thing here is the EVgo station is delivering more power, 91 kilowatt to the 78 kilowatt the supercharger is sending to the Cybertruck. That's a little surprising here because at this higher state of charge, I wouldn't expect to see that but it does happen from time to time. Our next stop is when the Cybertruck reaches 80% state of charge on the EVgo station, and that happens after 35 minutes of charging. You may have noticed the screen says 79% state of charge, but that happens on all EVgo stations. It seems like they take about 10 seconds or so to update, but the vehicle shuts off the charging as soon as it reaches its set point, which was 80% in this case, and the station hasn't been updated yet. But I did take a picture of the Cybertruck's display screen to prove that it did indeed reach 80% state of charge. The Cybertruck charging on the V3 Tesla Supercharger needed seven more minutes to reach 80% and shut off after charging a little over 42 minutes. So in the end, the Cybertruck charging on the 350 kilowatt EVgo station with the A to Z adapter actually charged the vehicle from 10% to 80% seven minutes faster than the V3 250 kilowatt Tesla Supercharger. Okay, well that went well. The adapter works just fine. It does what it's supposed to do. Currently, I believe it's the only Cybertruck specific CCS1 to NAX adapter on the market. I'm sure other companies are gonna come out with these, but for now, if you have a Cybertruck and you do wanna use CCS1 DC fast chargers, this is the only game in town, and I think that it is offering it at a reasonable price. Uh, as you know, if you watch this channel, I frequently use A to Z products. Never had a problem with them. I think they make high quality products and uh, I fully support uh, this one here. I think if you have a Cybertruck and you wanna use uh, CCS1 stations, I would uh, fully recommend picking up one of these. I think it's at a reasonable price. It works well. And you saw it even charges 
slightly faster than the Tesla superchargers because the other networks, EVgo, Electrify America, and the others have many 350 kilowatt, and now there's even higher power charging stations hitting the market. Today, if you wanna charge your Cybertruck as fast as possible, it's not on a Tesla supercharger. It's actually using one of these adapters and finding a 350 kilowatt or 400 kilowatt. There's some of those are coming out now. DC fast charger and plugging this guy in, you'll shave a couple of minutes off your charging time. It's not worth going out of your way for, but I guess if you have both options and uh, the cost is similar and the cost varies around the country, even by the time of day, uh, the cost can be different. You can have uh, an Electrify America charging station cost less than a local Tesla supercharger in the afternoon, but then in the evening, the Tesla supercharger costs less because they have dynamic pricing and they set the pricing according to the time of day uh, and also the electricity costs in the area. There's no simple way of saying this one's cheaper than this one. You have to open up your apps and take a look at what they charge at what time of day to really know which one's cheaper. It won't be that much of a difference either way. Uh, and I don't think the use of this is really to try to save money or even to charge two, three minutes faster. It's really just having the convenience of being able to charge anywhere. Uh, there are superchargers all over the country, but they're not everywhere. And there are instances and there are routes where a CCS1 DC fast charger might be more convenient for you to stop with your Cybertruck uh, along your journey. And if you have one of these guys in the vehicle, you can do it. Well, that's all we have here today. If this is your first time here on State of Charge, please hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming electric vehicle news and reviews. And as always, thanks for watching.